My first base was a spaghetti nightmare and I was armed with a super shotgun. I only managed to launch a rocket because I worked out logistics bots at the last moment. I think it took about four hours to make those rocket parts. My second base had a proper train system and a bus. I decided to try out the flamethrower coincidentally when the flamethrower became overpowered. Nice. My third base had lots of bots including the combat ones. I was delighted to launch my third rocket but as soon as I did I became a bit bored. I'd explored every bit of tech that the game had to offer and I didn't really want to follow in anyone else's footsteps. I considered that perhaps the perfect factory was a huge ring of ore and barreled oil. The next level down would be smelters and refineries, then plates, then the next intermediary products, then a mall ring, rocket parts and finally a silo. If I wanted another silo I could then duplicate the entire ring. It would be modular. It occurred to me that getting the ratios right from something like that would be overwhelming but I did still like the idea of having my raw materials encircling me. So I've now spent many hundreds of hours on four separate designs trying to make a modular system and I came up with what I call a grid bus. It's a silly system but it does allow you to be nuts with localized spaghetti which is heaps of fun but not run into it so much that it bogs down your building. The idea is that I could have a patchwork of cells in my map fed by smelters along the bottom row. And with fluids coming from the left hand side. You'll notice I also have coal and stone all the way up here. The neat part of this is if part of your grid slows down, for instance advanced research is full, the resources get moved around the factory. A normal bus can move unused resources further downstream, but this system can move it anywhere. The magic source was in the grid crossover. Designing this was one of the most fun times I've ever had in the game. You'll notice that copper comes in here, splits in two and goes right and left and joins in to the copper coming from the north and going left and right. And of course the same goes for the iron plate. So this works okay but I quickly ran into problems. Number one, I was running out of plate the higher up the map that I built. I underestimated how much plate I would need deep in the base. Number two, I forgot that oil and other liquids slow down as they get further from the origin. So all my fluids are up here and if I ran them through the base they would get slower and uh, just wouldn't make it. Eventually I succumbed and built a railroad and smelters inside the grid. So here you can see my railroad goes cuts all the way through and goes all the way up here. And I have smelters up here at the top and down here at the bottom. And if that grid continues I can throw more smelters into it as, well, as I go. This railway took up a lot of space and eventually I just launched a rocket, restarted the map and tried again. Grid number two. I knew I needed much more throughput so I doubled my grid's bus width. I also set up a system that had trains delivering small amounts of coal, iron ore and stone to each panel. Uh, also water, petroleum and lube to each panel. This allows almost everything to be built in a grid cell. Uh, I have a separate cell for nuclear stuff over here. I also have a dedicated cell for fluid management. The first problem I had was that though the system is modular it creates two types of grid panel. Iron plate on the inside and copper plate on the inside. So here you can see copper plate is on the inside of the grid and in the next one iron plate is on the inside of the grid. This meant that each cell had to be placed in a checkerboard pattern or I had to rebuild all the connectors. So my labs would be in this one and this one where the iron was on the inside 
and my modules could be on the one with the copper on the inside. The second problem occurred when an update changed the way that fluid tankers worked. I'd gone out of my way to make a system that carried water, petro and lube in the same tanker and now that was broken. I launched a rocket and then experimented with my next grid. This is the silliest grid. Each cell up until this point was sized to be the exact size of a roboport. Everything could be connected to the network. Uh, this one was broken down into a quarter of that size. Also, no more fluid delivery by tanks, everything arrives in barrels. My grid has four lanes, so I have one crucial component in each lane. That means eight resources. Here you can see them all. I've got coal, water, lubricant, petro, iron ore, copper plate, stone and iron plate. These areas are just too small to work with. It this was way too silly, but it did inspire me to revisit my intersection. I couldn't have two lanes merging. Once I started to revisit it and think about it, I realized that I could probably make one that gets rid of the checkerboard problem. Also, I got rid of the idea of barreling all my liquids because then I had to deal with getting the empty barrels back to the fluid place. This is grid number four, my final grid bus. Every cell is double sized and has a grid railway running throughout it. Here you can see railway lines along here and my bus runs through the center of each area. It's interesting to note that since I started this project, I've been seeing some grid railway bases appearing, which have been really impressive. But each cell gets blueprinted down with substations covering all areas. Let's have a closer look. Each cell gets a radar, four robo ports, and a complete electricity network. So these guys cover the entire place. I don't have to worry about setting up electricity poles. There's only one train line on each side of each cell. Uh, vertical tra train lines run north-south, so top to bottom, but not bottom to top. And horizontal lines weave back and forth, so they snake down right to left and then left to right and then right to left. This could continue on for as far as you want to go. Trains then return to the top, up the side. For iron ore and copper ore, I have huge trains that drop both across. You'll notice they keep unplugging themselves because, because the bus is full of over here and it, they realize that they don't need to enter any more into, uh, into the system. This prevents me using too much power. Smelters are now in every single cell. So we just drop off the raw stuff, smelt it down, and send it onto the grid. And you'll notice down here, I'm dropping off coal and stone. And over here, this is where I'm dropping off my fluid. Every cell gets all of its components from the same spot each time. This makes it much more modular. The only issue I have now is that the railway lines are traveling in different directions. So here, all my trains are traveling to the west. Whereas in this cell, all of my trains are traveling to the east. But that's not as big an issue as the last checkerboard issue. Navigation is nice and easy because I have built all of these paths to get myself around the base. And I even have railway crossings. So if a train's coming, that little door pops up, prevents me from getting squished. There it goes now. And if I want to move myself around, I also have train stations. So I stand on the train station and it calls a shuttle train for me. There he is. And that means I can go wherever I want now.
The grid bus is really fun to play. Uh, you can get yourself really bound up in spaghetti and then start again with a clean cell. Spaghetti gets sandboxed. Uh, I certainly recommend giving it a go. Uh, I think my next game will be a bit more traditional though. Perhaps a nice bus. Though I do have this idea of an interweaving bus. Or maybe a cyclical one. <laughs>